Hello and welcome to the talk where I'll be presenting the acoustic precipitation sensor. Uh, throughout this talk, I'll be introducing myself, then uh, present the problem and the current solutions to the problem. Uh, after that, I'll be discussing the um, acoustic approach and uh, the digital signal processing involved in the acoustic approach. Uh, after discussing the DSP uh, part, we will look into the uh, precipitation differentiation. So, uh, how can we differentiate between different types of precipitation, like uh, rain and hail, for example? Um, after that, we'll be looking into an implementation that has been under development. And finally, we will look into future work. So, uh, my name is Dren. I'm a computer engineer. I have a master's degree in computer engineering. I'm a software developer by trade, but I really love uh, building electronics and tinkering a lot. Uh, um, like uh, um, I uh, also do uh, freelance work for um, embedded systems and stuff like that, um, but most of the time I build stuff for fun and just to learn things because that's the best way to learn stuff. Um, as I said, I really like uh, building stuff, so um, that falls pretty good within the um, uh, learning things. Uh, besides that, I really like adding DSP to everything, uh, so just I, I try to find an excuse to uh, put DSP in things. So because it's like um, the challenges there are interesting, and um, there's usually math involved, and um, nowadays you don't really get to use math like um, DSP level math a lot. So that's kind of an excuse to to do that. And finally, I love RF design. I um, I love comps in general. I'm a licensed amateur radio operator. Um, this has nothing to do with this talk, actually, but um, I just wanted to put it there because that's like um, a big part of me. Um, so without uh, losing much time, I'll be jumping into the problem and the current solutions. So the issue is how do we detect or measure rain and uh, this is the first problem. Do we want to detect or measure rain? Um, if we want to detect it, we can use something like the device on the left here, where uh, by a resistive or capacitive means, it just senses that there's a raindrop on, um, uh, on top of this circuit board type thing. Uh, so this one is good for only detecting rain. So, for example, you want to know whether it's raining or not, not the amount of rain that is falling. If you're interested in measurement, uh, so gauging, you have the device on the right, which um, consists of two uh, sort of containers and a balance. And those containers get filled with rain and whenever a um, specific amount of rain uh, falls into it, it makes it tip into one side and spill that, the, the rain that has been accumulated on that side. And that, it, that allows the, uh, the other side of the container to fill up and spill that side. Um, so uh, it's like a rock in motion here. And there is usually a, like a Hall effect sensor and a magnet here to uh, basically detect the number of these uh, rocking motions. And that way you can uh, precisely measure how much rain has fallen. Uh, the issue with, with this is that it's really prone to uh, stuff falling into it, and um, it's um, kind of hard to maintain. You have to look after it, and uh, if you want to, to have uh, accurate measurements, uh, as well as its inability to accurately uh, sense or at all sense hail, for example. Um, so it's kind of limited to gauging a rain. Uh, so with those solutions in mind, there's actually other solutions, but these are the, the most common ones. With those in mind, we'll be moving to, to the acoustic approach, which we'll be discussing the, the sensor today. So the acoustic approach, uh, uh, the principle around it is based around the um, uh, impact that a raindrop, um, the, the energy released when a, a raindrop impacts a specific surface. So that, that what, that's what ha what's happening when you hear it raining at site, so the, the raindrops are hitting surfaces and that is uh, being converted into acoustic energy or sound. 
So uh, the approach here is that we want to uh, analyze uh, the impact and uh, of course uh, uh, after some signal processing and conditioning uh, we will be able to infer the amount of rain that has fallen uh, by, the, by integrating like, uh, the size of the drops and um, the, uh, the number of the, the drops that have been detected. Um, the reason why this approach uh, is uh, sort of better than the previous two is that it uh, solves that issue of uh, first of all, it's, uh, it's, like, it's a, a, an approach which, which enables you to measure the amount of rain that has fallen. Uh, so it, ga it goes into the gauging category. Um, and second of all, um, uh, it actually it's more robust in terms of uh, it's more immune to debris falling into it and stuff like that. Um, so how do we measure? We use a microphone and uh, we sample that microphone and do some digital signal processing on that. And after um, the DSP is done, we, we analyze the, um, the, the waveform of the signal as well as the energy of the signal uh, for each raindrop. And based on these, we infer different characteristics about that raindrop and uh, we, um, finally we, uh, we decide on the amount of water basically on that raindrop. So we can integrate those uh, raindrops and come up with a um, a result on how much rain has fallen. Uh, besides the um, plus of um, mm. being able to robustly um, uh, measure the, the amount of rain that has fallen, we can also measure hail um, because uh, we it's it's basically the same principle that the hail drops will uh, hit the um, uh, the housing. And this acoustic energy will be much higher than the um, or raindrops. So uh, the hail will be. Uh, we'll talk about a, bit, a, bit, a bit later about differentiating between hail and rain. So uh, that's um, that's the, the next topic. So the idea is that we have a sort of a housing, and within that housing we have the microphone and the, the rest of the electronics. And when the rain hits that housing, it generates some sound. That sound is picked up by the microphone, amplified, um, converted into a digital signal, and uh, goes into some DSP stuff, which will uh, finally infer the um, uh, characteristics about uh, the, the raindrops. Um, so, uh, just to uh, stop for a bit into the DSP part. So, basically, what we have here is that uh, we are uh, we have this uh, buffer, which is a running buffer within the, the device. So we have a microcontroller there, and it's sampling data from the ADC, uh, from the microphone, and um, it's basically just pushing data into the buffer, and uh, the older data is being um, written off the buffer. So we always have a window there on the, like the latest n amount of samples there. So what we do is, there's two things. Uh, first of all, we do um, a signal, uh, we, we compute the signal correlation factor. So um, we have a sample of a signal that is, uh, we know it's when a raindrop hits the, excuse me, uh, when a raindrop hits the housing. So that is the one down here. Uh, so this is something that we have pre recorded based on the housing that we're using and stuff like that. And we compute this um, correlation factor or the normalized correlation factor, which is like a DSP function which uh, computes the similarity be between these two functions. And um, besides that, we also compute the signal energy. So we want to know how powerful the, the uh, sound that was generated by that raindrop was. So um, basically, we want to know how big the raindrop was because. Uh, the, big, the bigger the raindrop, the, the mass is higher, as well as the terminal, the terminal velocity for, for that um, uh, raindrop is higher, so it's, it goes up linearly. So um, you, you have a better idea on the size of the raindrop, so you can um, kind of estimate the amount of water that was in that drop. And of course, when you, once you know the, the amount of uh, water in the drop, uh, as well as the uh, number of drops that uh, have fallen, you can simply integrate those and 
come up with um, uh, with a result on how much rain has fallen. So, um, so basically, those are the two things. Uh, we have the uh, signal correlation factor, which basically tells us whether that's uh, impact from a raindrop, or we have a different pre-recorded sample for like a hail drop. So we can maybe that's uh, a way we can dif differentiate between these two, and uh, we'll discuss about that later. And uh, we have the signal energy, which informs us about the, the um, impact energy. So basically, how much um, how much water was in that raindrop. Um, so, um, the um, normalized uh, correlation factor is one approach, but it's kind of slow because um, for every sample that you collect from the um, ADC, uh, you have to go through each of the samples in the buffer and um, basically uh, multiply them together. And that's the correlation factor uh, computation algorithm. Uh, so, so that's that's sort of slow um, compared to an FFT based approach. FFT is short for fast Fourier transform. Um, so basically, we uh, we convert the signal to a time domain, and then we uh, simply multiply uh, sample by sample uh, by uh, the FFT of a pre-recorded sample. So we don't have to compute the uh, FFT of the pre-recorded sample. Uh, we we can store the FFT. Um, uh, instead of computing it every time. And once we multiply those, we compute the inverse of FFT, and this approach is usually uh, much faster than um, the uh, normalized correlation factor computation. So, uh, uh, these I, I've tried both of these approaches, and uh, it depends on what you want to do. If you want to um, have one sample uh, against which you want to compare everything, and then you can use the normalized uh, correlation factor uh, because it, it takes time, but in the uh, microcontroller that I've used in, um, uh, in the implementation, it actually is powerful enough to compute, uh, I think, more than once um, uh, the um, uh, normalized correlation factor. But if you want to do like multiple uh, pre-recorded samples, so you ha we want to have a pre-recorded sample for uh, small raindrops, big raindrops, hail, and um, in that case, you um, you would probably want to use the FFT um, uh, approach, which is called cross correlation. Um, this is usually much more common in DSP. Um, so, um, yeah, that that's it about the. Um, um, uh, DSP part, how we compute the, how we know that uh, a raindrop has fallen and it's not some, some other sound. And um, of course, you also need to compute the energy released by the, um, uh, by the event so that you know um, uh, the amount of water in the, in the mm, sort of precipitation that you're detecting. Okay, so this, this is the uh, hardware implementation that I've done. Um, it's based around the ESP32. Um, it uses a MEMS microphone and it's an I2S microphone, so um, it, it basically all the digitization is done uh, in the microphone, so we don't have to worry about the um, uh, amplification, um, ADC and stuff like that. So uh, samples are directly sent from the microphone uh, in a digital form to the microcontroller, uh, so that's a, a big plus. But of course, you, if you want to have another approach, you can use like a normal microphone, uh, electric microphone, um, but you have to do the amplification and other stuff yourself. Um, this board uh, also, uh, you can interface it through Wi-Fi or RS-485. Uh, and um, of course, m most of the sensors you want to interface through RS-485 uh, mm -hmm. to, to, to have a more real, reliable um, uh, communication with them and stuff like that. Uh, the good thing about the ESP32 is that it supports uh, DMA um, sampling to memory. So basically, what you're doing is uh, reading the microphone data and sending them to the to the memory without uh, using time from the CPU. And uh, that's that's a good thing because it lets you do stuff on the side while the microphone is sending data to the to the memory. Um, 
the ESP32, uh, uh, a lot of uh, the ESP32 versions, they have two cores. So uh, they're a dual, dual core uh, microcontroller. And uh, all the DSP in, in this case is done in the second core. So the um, normal light correlation factor is computed in the second core, as well as the energy for each raindrop. So uh, basically you, you have the, the first core free to do whatever you want. If you want to do Wi-Fi management and stuff like that. Um, so that's, that's pretty good. And the ESP32 is, uh, is fast enough to do both the cross correlation and as well as the uh, um, normalized uh, correlation um, uh, factors. Uh, so the, overall the board um, is it, pretty capable and it's really cheap to build. Um, so um, uh, unfortunately lately I've been having issues with the local postal system so not being able to order from not being able to order online from I usually order from JLCPCP and uh, haven't been able to test this uh, but um, once that once everything is tested and working out um, I'll be publishing the everything related to the board um, but I haven't tested this board but I have tested the microphone the combination between the microphone and the uh, ESP32 into a separate board and uh, of course uh, the um, norm normalized uh, um, correlation factor algorithm the working pretty well detecting uh, the raindrops as well as the measuring the energy from each raindrop so um, uh, continuing to the implementation uh, this is the um, the idea behind the, the housing for this uh, sensor um, so um, it's basically a dome um, uh, and uh, the bottom part is basically just a like a cap for the dome and uh, the board is sandwiched in between those two um, parts and the bottom part as you can see here uh, you have a, a part where you can uh, fix it to a pole so if you want to uh, raise it higher, uh, so it's not affected by like ground level noise and stuff like that. Um, it, it's pretty printable. Um, it's, uh, the good thing about this is it's immune to debris because it's like a sphere. So you, um, you're, uh, it, it's um, not as, um, the possibility of collecting like uh, debris on top of it is, is much lower and um, uh, since it might affect the uh, sound characteristics uh, coming from raindrops if if it's um, if it collects stuff on it um, It's sort of resistant to birds, but to be honest, what is resistant to birds? Nothing is um, So uh, that might be an issue um, uh, So birds sitting on it and doing their stuff um, as well as um, uh, it's as I said earlier, it's attachable to a pole, so it, you can fix it to a pole and uh, raise it higher. Uh, so as for uh, future work, um, I am interested in collecting real life data, so implementing the whole thing. And uh, I mean, this the implementation is ready, but we have to 3D print the housing and um, um, get the new boards from um, the manufacturer and collect some real t uh, real life data and uh, test different um, approaches or um, different pre-recorded sections for, for the uh, cross-correlation uh, algorithm, stuff like that. Uh, I'm also going to look into implementing classifier based on the real-life data I'll be collecting. So basically, we'll be implementing classifier which enables us to um, detect between uh, raindrop sizes and um, hail and stuff like that. Um, of course, we want to calibrate it against um, uh, uh, known calibrated equipment, so we know that it's it's working well. And um, we we'll also want to um, explore different housing designs. Maybe the the dome style design is not is not the perfect one. Um, besides that, I'll be uh, when everything is done, uh, I'll be publishing everything, and um, it will be in GitHub. Uh, but I'm most likely not going to publish it uh, until I have a, like a working board, a working, uh, a good um, working housing and stuff like that. And the final goal is to have a network of those sensors which can sense hail and maybe build a early warning system for uh, which would be used in, for example, agriculture uh, where people would be informed 
um, in advance that there's um, a hail coming in their direction based on triggers on uh, other sensors uh, which are around them. So this is like a like far far fast idea, but I just wanted to throw it there. Uh, so this is it. Thank you for your time. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, please go ahead. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jan. Very interesting, as always, with your uh, innovative uh, solutions. Um, I can see that there is a question here in the chat. Uh, Phil says, what uh, RTOS did you use on ESP32? Yeah, so, hi, uh, thanks for, for uh, being on the internet talk. So I, I used I, uh, the ESP IDF uh, framework, so the default RTOS there is free RTOS. So, and, and thank you for you know, your in interest in the project. Okay, Phil, if you have any follow-up, feel free to pose it as well. Um, I had a question. So, what's the state of uh, current solutions out there? Anything open source and the closed ones? How are they uh, done? Do you have any idea? Have you explored them? Uh, there's uh, some attempts to uh, acoustic uh, uh, rain sensors, um, open source. I'm, I'm not sure if they're open source, but there's a few uh, attempts to building those. Um, um, Usually there are projects as um, like um, um, dissertation or something for for their uh, bachelor's or master's and stuff like that. Um, but I, I didn't see something that was like um, um, in a like a uh, good stage where you, you can just start using it. And uh, to be honest, uh, even this is a super early stage right now. But um, like the the combination of the, uh, uh, the devices I, I use, it's pretty capable. So um, I think that people can contribute and maybe even add some, um, some more complex logic in there uh, to um, basically uh, figure out what's the, like the uh, uh, raindrop size um, and uh, the amount of water and the raindrop size and stuff because in the end uh, that's that's the goal measuring the the amount of water that is falling on the uh, on the device. Okay, and when you say early warning system, uh, now I, I there are some flood uh, early warning systems. I guess they work based on on you know uh, what do you call it like cloud. Uh, yeah. Sensor, so, so storm sensing, yeah. Yeah. So a, a, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, like early warning systems and stuff like that um, are um, either done by satellite or radar. Uh, so m much more complex technologies. The issue with uh, those is the uh, with the first one is that satellites have a like a, a limited resolution um, and. Um, you can um, you can only do so much in terms of knowing precisely where and when uh, stuff is happening. You, can, you know the big picture, but um, the details are a bit more complex. Um, and uh, radars are usually much uh, complex and expensive to set up. So um, that's um, that's the issue with those two uh, solutions. There's another solution uh, which uses uh, basically light and tries to sense um, in between a, a detector and a light source uh, what is what is happening in there. Um, that's a good solution as well, but of course there's issues with that as well because uh, it might be foggy and uh, or there, there might be smoke in that, uh, in that part and that might affect the readings of the sensors. So there's trade-offs in between those solutions. Uh, but this, the acoustic approach, is uh, sort of interesting because <laughs> mainly because of the challenges. And if, if done properly, um, uh, it, it can it can be really capable and robust. Okay, thanks. Uh, so we have a question from Ardian. He says uh, two questions. Yeah. Since we'll be recording only energy, how will you be able to distinguish between the mass and velocity of the raindrop? The later can be influenced by the wind. Yeah. So the the, the wind part is um, the wind part is 
actually a, a kind of a challenge, uh, to be honest. So um, one of the approaches that can be taken to combat this issue of the wind is that when, when you have a wind, usually uh, that affects the velocity laterally, so um, sideways, how do I say it, horizontally. Um, so um, in that case, um, we could experiment with having multiple microphones uh, inside the dome and uh, trying to figure out uh, at what part of the dome is the, um, is the uh, drops being, uh, or uh, with what part of the dome are the drops hitting it? So um, that way you can kind of figure out uh, and compensate for like if if it's a really shallow angle, so it's not from the top. So you know you know you got a strong wind there. And um, as for the velocity, uh, the velocity velocity is uh, kind of um, dictated by the mass of the drop because um, uh, the mass kind of limits the, the there's a, you can look online there's a relation between the, the mass and the terminal velocity of the raindrop so basically the raindrop cannot exceed a specific velocity because uh, because of air resistance but uh, the, the velocity is kind of um, dependent on the mass of the drop because uh, the higher the mass the like um, <laughs> you can look it up, so I, I won't really stop for the, uh, on this for a really long time. But uh, just keep in mind that this is sort of uh, experimental, and there's a lot of factors there that can affect it. But uh, the goal is to uh, gather more data and try to figure out whether uh, this is um, how, how accurate can we uh, make the solution be. Okay, and the second question from Arvian, it says, what are your yeah. plans for validating the system? So the, the, uh, the idea would be to get a, uh, like a gauge that is uh, currently used, the one that I showed in the slides uh, earlier, and uh, try to figure out, um, um, basically do some em empirical measurements and try to figure out um, uh, how far are we from the actual measurement, because those gauges are uh, really precise. Uh, but they have other issues, as I stated in, in the beginning of the, um, um, of the talk, uh, with debris falling in them and making them imprecise. Um, so that's like um, the plan to uh, sort of calibrate and make sure that the devices, the readings from the device are correct. Okay, a uh, question from Phil. Uh, can you remind us where to find your slides or entry door to your project? I need to make something similar, unwired. Yeah, so um, uh, I could give you the slides, but uh, right now I haven't published anything related to the project because, uh, as I said during the, the talk, um, uh, I would like to have um, uh, things tested first and uh, right now because of the pandemic and the situation with the local uh, postal service um, haven't been able to like build a board um, I have uh, some I have a board from uh, another project which use, uses the same microphone and DSP32 uh, so I have been using that um, to because basically this board is uh, like sort of a modification of that board um, it, it just adds RS485 um, so um, I'll be testing with that more, but I, I'm going to have to test like uh, more um, real scenarios and not just um, simulating drops because I've, I've been doing that, just simulating drops. I haven't tested it in rain much. Uh, so that's the goal. I think um, once um, the, the software project is done and uh, I'll public, publish the schematics and the, uh, the board, uh, once I, I get those from JNC PCB, then and see that they're that they're working, then um, um, I'll try to contact you. You can uh, maybe uh, find me online somewhere. I'm on Twitter, uh, name and last name um, concatenated. So um, maybe you can just DM me there or uh, just uh, follow me on Twitter. Okay, I don't see any other questions. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Dren, our Thank you. time is up, so have a good evening. Thank you. Uh, the next session is Decloudification of the Cloud by David Hallas, and we'll start in 